this is a quick video. I'm going to talk in this video about what you're given and how to find the formulas to use. Uh, from chatting to some of you, um, you told me that the part you find most difficult about this is knowing uh, what formula to use and the formulas involved. And once you know that, you find it easier. Uh, that is the hardest part. Uh, they don't make it easy. They don't tell you very easily what you're supposed to find. Uh, but once you know the formula uh, and you know a formula to use, you know, it's just a case of filling the blanks. So how do we fill in the blanks here? The first one, they ask you to find closing stock. Where is closing stock in a profit and loss and balance sheet? Closing stock here would be your sales, opening stock, purchases, less closing stock, cost of goods sold. We're not given it. Obviously, we have to find it. It also is a current asset. We're not given it. Why? Because we have to find it. So we can't find it there. How else could we find it? They've told us two other things. They told us to find closing stock if the rate of stock turnover is 10. So let's look at that. Rate of stock turnover is 10. This is your formula list. Very, 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 very uh, handy. And you absolutely need to become familiar with being able to find a formula. I know that the rate of stock turnover is here. They told us the rate of stock turnover is equal to 10. So what do you think you're going to do to work it out? Put in that this is equal to 10. Put in the figures you have. And you'll find the missing figure. And the missing figure will be average stock. So now, back to the question. I found that if I put the answer of rate of stock turnover is equal to 10, I can find the missing figure. And the missing figure was average stock. Now what else can I do? They ask us to find the rate of stock turnover 10 based on average stock. How about, we've just found what average stock is equal to. How about if we put average stock in now? We have the answer for average stock in euros. I have opening stock and I have the two. Now I can work out closing stock. And that's what I've done. I have a video of me going through the solutions. You know, that's the working there. That's from top to bottom. And it is quite easy once you know where to go for formulas. All I'm doing is I'm just literally using the information they give me. I can't find out closing stock easily. So I go to the first thing they tell me, rate of stock turnover is 10. So I go to the rate of stock turnover formula. I put it equal to 10, fill in the information I have, and I find the missing piece of information, which is average stock. Now I have this formula. I know the answer, because I just found average stock. So I put in all the missing information, and guess what I'm left? Guess what I'll find at the very end? I will find closing stock. So all we're doing basically is we're playing around with the figures that they give us to find the one that's missing. Dividend yield is very similar. So dividend yield, let's go to this here, formula list. My dividend yield formula is here. Dividend per share divided by share price. They, this is always the same. They'll never give you the dividend per share. This is always given. So how do we find dividend per share? Because in order to work out dividend yield, I need to know dividend per share. Let's go up to my dividend per share. This is the formula for dividend per share. They'll give you the total dividend. They'll give you the number of ordinary shares, and you'll have to find preference dividend. How do you find preference dividend? Preference dividend is equal to my preference shares multiplied by percent. So I work out my preference shares multiplied by percent, which is here, preference shares, 150,000 by percent, 5%. I've worked that out. What can I do with this? Put my preference dividend in here. And now I can work out my dividend per share. I work out my dividend per share. And now I have it here. And now I have this and I have this. Now I can find my dividend yield. I'm not going into the intricacies of this question because, you know, it would turn into a half an hour video. I'm just going through how I find formulas. Uh, and it's just, it's the same, that's the thing, it's so repetitive, it is the same thing, but obviously, in order to get, understand it the very first time, um, it takes a great deal of concentration, um, but once you know how to do it, you know how to do it. Earnings per share, this is my third one, so you're supposed to find the earnings per share given the information here. So let's go back to our formula list. Earnings per share is here. Net profit minus preference dividend divided by number of ordinary shares. They'll give you this, they'll give you this, they won't give you this. But you'll just work it out here. And I just did that a second ago. You'll actually need that for part two. 
So you'll, you'll find this, you'll work this out. Preference shares, 150,000. Multiply by percent, 5%. That answer is going to be 7,500. So then you put in the 7,500 here. You'll have this, you'll have this, and you'll have this. You can work out the EPS. Next one. Return on equity funds. So return on equity funds. Let's go back to the formula list. Return on equity funds is another name. I've given all the variations of names. To make it complicated, they just give different different names. Make it, you know, again and again, they'll try to confuse the way they ask the information. But once you know what they're asking, it's easy. Return on equity funds formula is here. Net profit after preference dividend divided by equity funds. Okay. So my net profit after dividend, you can work out the question here. I have it down here as well, just to kind of show you the way I've done it off. So my net profit after preference dividend, so my net profit is 114,000 after my preference dividend. So after I take away my dividend, we worked out the preference dividend earlier. As I said before, it's preference shares minus the percent amount at the bottom of the formula list. So what did I do? after preference dividend so i'm minusing the preference dividend because i'm taking it away after the preference dividend what's my equity funds equity funds is down here it's my ordinary shares and my p l balance that's one thing i'll actually add into the formula list just to put in brackets ordinary shares plus p l balance so i have that here showing my ordinary shares plus my p l balance and then i worked out the percent that one is that it doesn't show up as much and i don't think i've shown that one to you before um i'm just going to add in ordinary shares plus p and l balance and um just give me a second sorry i know i'm just doing this up here but i'll update that in your google classroom um i use this myself because uh one note is a, a cool database and i can have all of my notes on this but I actually can't share it uh, unless you pay for one note um and i'm obviously not going to ask you to pay for one note so i just send out notes individually um so if i go back to this question again they ask us to find the return on equity shares for our equity funds go to the formula list fill in what we have net profit i know that after preference dividends i've worked that out already equity funds are these two added together equals percent uh last one interest cover what do we do go to the formula list interest covers down here net profit before interest divided by interest i have my net profit and then i can work out my interest and i'll just show you briefly again that i've done this down here my net profit my interest is sixteen thousand. Uh, you work that. I I go through that more in the video because I'll, I'll be you know, spending too much time working out the interest. Um, you're looking at your uh, debentures here. Uh, the eight percent by two hundred thousand. Um, so that's working at my interest, and then obviously it's my net profit before interest. So my net profit before interest means it's my net profit before I ever took away the interest. Here. So how do we get my net profit before this interest? I add it back. This is my net profit after interest. If I add the 16,000, it's my net profit before interest. So 130,000 divided by 16,000 is 8.13 times. That's the 2017 question. That'll be a little bit of help for doing that. The 2016 question, first part they give us is cash purchases if the period of credit received from trade creditors is two months. Where would I find cash purchases in my question? It would be given here in between opening stock and closing stock. They don't give it to you, they kind of leave it out purposely. They give out, leave up total purchases, that'd be total purchases, uh, cash plus credit purchases, they leave it out. Uh, so I need to find my cash purchases. If period of credit received from trade creditors is two months. So let's go back to my formula list. Period of credit uh, received from trade creditors is going to be down here. Creditors, creditors divided by this is my period of credit collection period, period of credit received from trade creditors. So this is the formula, because again, they've just asked us to find cash purchases, but they've given you the answer two months for this formula. So I go to find that formula, period of credit given to trade creditors. Creditors divided by credit purchases, and it gives the answer to be two months. So obviously this would be by days, this would be by months. 
I have my creditors. I'm going to multiply that by 12 and it's going to be equal to two months. I don't know this figure, but obviously I have everything else and I have the answer. So I'll be able to work out what credit purchases are. Once I've worked out what credit purchases are, now I can find out how much cash purchases are. Why? Because if you look at it the way we've done it and the way I do this out here, is this little table at the top, if I was to fill this in properly, it would be sales, less cost of sales, opening stock, which they give you, purchases, total purchases, less closing stock is equal to cost of sales. And they've only given us, you know, the remaining figures apart from the total purchases. But I know that this plus X minus 65,000 is equal to 752,000. So I can work out what total purchases is. And I can work out total purchases here. All I've done is my cost of sales 7552 is equal to opening stock 55 plus purchases minus 65. Purchases, total purchases is 762. This is 762. So this is 762. I found from my period of credit uh, given to trade creditors, I'll find my credit purchases from that. This is my total purchases. I'll find my credit purchases. So total purchases is this. It's made up of credit and cash. I know my credit, therefore the remaining is cash purchases. It's very repetitive very confusing for me to go through two or three minutes uh, while talking that's why i have the videos done out so you can watch again and again uh, rather than me saying it once it's there for you to watch as many times as possible and i know obviously you've an incredible amount of work to do on other subjects uh, as well so you don't have all your time to give to it but just focus on you know there's five of them there just just stop it take time you know okay where did he get this figure from let's scroll back in the video okay he got it from here okay no so he got that figure from here and then he brought it over there um you know that's the way you need to be able to kind of think through a step-by-step -step process dividend yield let's go back to okay that that's the second one they're asking us let's go back to the formulas dividends down here dividend yield formula dps divided by share price they'll never give you the dps so you'll have to find it out but they'll give you the rest how do you find the DPS? It has its own formula. Total dividend minus preference dividend divided by number of ordinary shares. They'll give you this, they'll give you this. They won't give you the preference dividend. How do you find that out? Preference dividend is your preference shares multiplied by percent. And I just added that in there recently. I hadn't added it in before. Um, preference shares, 300,000 by 5% for this question, which is uh, whatever, 6,000, 6, something like that. Doesn't matter um so that's working out my preference shares whatever the preference shares is given uh, i have that worked out i'll go back to my dps formula i can fill that in fill in everything else i'll get the answer for dps i'll go back to my formula i'll put that answer in and then i can work out dividend yield note three price earnings ratio so price earnings ratio down here share price in, sh in cent divided by eps they'll give you your share price in cent they won't give you eps so what do we do this is the eps formula you'll have this you'll have this and we just worked that out you know we just worked out that out here so now you have all of them and you'll get your answer for eps they'll put that there you'll have the share price then you'll find the price earnings the fourth one is return on capital employed. So return on capital employed, I'm going up to the top. Return on capital employed is net profit before interest divided by capital employed. My net profit up here, net profit is 133,000. That's my net profit after I took away the interest. So let's add the interest back because that's my net profit before interest. So my net profit before interest I'm adding that back 145,000 divided by capital employed. This is your capital employed figure. This guy, not anything here, it's the very last one. That one is capital employed. So, my net profit before interest divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 over 1 is equal to my return on capital employed percent figure. The last one you have to find is dividend cover. So, going back down here, dividends. 
my formula, I can work out. There's two of them here, um, and I'm glad that I can kind of explain this. There's two ways of working it out. If you want, you can do net profit minus preference dividend divided by total dividend minus preference dividend, um, or you could do EPS divided by DPS. And if you have these two, this is easier. Guess what? We just worked out our EPS and DPS for the earlier ones. We worked out DPS here and EPS here, earnings per share and dividends per share. So if you want, you can find these two first and work them out and put EPS over DPS. Or else you can just, you know, your net profit dividend capacity will work with the preference dividend, total dividend minus preference dividend again. Either or, uh, sometimes they give you some information so that everyone's able to work out one and not the other one. But there's two ways of working with that formula. You don't need to do both, you just need to do one. So uh, this is very quick. I rushed through this, but again, if I was to go into detail on where I'm getting this figure from in this question, um, we would be here for a long time. Instead, I focused on how you attack this. Look at the question. This is the formula they ask for. Now, how do I work that out? How do I work this out? I might need to go to this formula and realize that I need to find another formula. So let's go to that formula. Can we find that out? If we find that out, then, then we can go back to this. And higher level is mostly, you know, in order to find the price earnings ratio, you first need to find the earnings per share. Because if you go to this, it's price earnings ratio is share price divided by earnings per share. So if I find earnings per share, I just, you know, put in the price earnings ratio, um, share price divided by earnings per share, and I get my answer. You need to work out one thing to work out the other. The easiest way to do it is by looking as much as you can at the formulas and getting familiar with it. Hope that helps.